Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are still working in this hallway. We have done a bunch of projects in here already, but the one that you need to see if you're gonna watch today's video, go back and watch last week's video if you haven't seen it because we built beams for this hallway and today we are going to install those, a few other small projects, and then I think this time for real, the hallway project will be complete, at least for now. Okay, it is beam install day and I'm so excited. But before we get to that, you guys always see me wear my AirPods. I have them on anytime I'm doing any project and I get a lot of questions about what I'm listening to and it's always some form of true crime. It's usually podcasts. If you have any true crime podcast recommendations, put them in the comments because I'm always looking for new ones. I know I'm not the only one out there who likes this stuff too, just look at all the documentaries on Netflix. So I wanted to tell you guys about today's sponsor, June's Journey. So June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game and it's set in the 1920s. And it's about this woman named June Parker and the whole object of the game is you are helping June to go on a quest to solve the murder of her sister. So right up my alley. I like to play this game to relax because I don't have to think about it too much, but also it's not boring, so it holds my attention at the same time. The app is free to download on your Android or on your iPhone, so you can take it anywhere you go with you and play the game. I was going to include some of the footage of me playing, but I can't because I'm way past the beginner levels and I don't want to spoil it for you guys. So if you want to check out June's journey, you can click the link in the description box down below and all of you true crime people like me, I really think that you'll like it. Thank you to June's journey for sponsoring today's video. Make sure that you guys go check them out and let's get to work. Before we get started on the beams, look what finally came in this trim piece that goes right there. It's been driving me nuts, so it finally came in, so I wanna get that installed to really finish off these stairs. Okay, time to install the beams and I'm starting with the smallest one because I think that that one will be the easiest and I'll show you how I'm going to install that. I'm gonna figure it out as I go. I've never done this before. So the first thing that I did was find the studs in my wall and I got lucky because where I wanted to put the beams was right on studs on either side. So I was able to use these scrap pieces of wood as my anchor pieces and I screwed those right into the wall and then I was having issues because I cut this beam the exact width of the hallway and I'm like just struggling to get it in there because it's not a perfect width. I ended up having to trim the beam a tiny little bit. And so I was finally able to get it to slide over those anchor pieces. And then I put one screw in just to make sure that it was secure and then shot the rest around the beam with my nail gun. Okay, got the beam in. I love it. It adds so much to the hallway, but there are like some gaps on the side, which I don't love. I'm gonna try to maybe brainstorm for that. I don't, I don't think it looks terrible. I might caulk them, we'll see. And then I wood filled that, where I put that screw in. I was able to use finishing nails for the rest of it. 
And now I'm going to add the next two beams, but I'm going to install them a little bit differently where before I was able to put blocks on the side and install it, but where I wanna install the middle beams, like right here, it doesn't have a stud, so I'm going to go from the ceiling. I'm up here in the attic checking out the joist situation because I am getting everything ready to hang the beams. Now, of course, my joists are running this way from left to right right here, and that's the way the beams are gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is take this two by four that I cut, and I am going to place it in between these two joists and I will screw from either side and it's like we're making our own stud in the ceiling that way we can have something to screw into whenever we are putting up our little support pieces for the beams. To hang this beam, I'm gonna try something different. For this end right here, I have like a scrap mock-up piece. So I'm gonna take that and trace around the edges of it. And then I'm actually gonna cut the drywall, which will give us some more room when we're installing. Okay, turns out there was something for me to drill into on the wall, just didn't realize it. So I'm gonna go check down there and see if that has the same thing. For this beam location, I was able to add the supports for the beams to attach to on the wall, not the ceiling. That was for the sides. And I was getting ready to go in the attic to add another support piece for the middle. And I realized that the joist started running the other way. And so I was able to screw directly into a joist. And then I trimmed the beams because they were a little bit long. I built them that way purposely. And it was kind of a chore to get them up by myself upstairs, but I did it and we are ready to install. I thought for sure that I was going to need two people to install these beams because they're almost eight feet long, but cutting away the drywall like that gave the beams a little ledge for them to sit on and then I was able to use my mallet and just kind of hit them up so they would sit flush against the ceiling as best as I could get them and then I used my nail gun and just shot a bunch of nails into each of the anchor pieces to make sure that they were nice and secure. Okay, that method worked so much better. You can see it's going into the drywall and I will just patch, I will tape around the beam and I will patch that with some drywall mud and it will look like it's structural going into the wall, which is way better than this gap right there. Also, I cannot believe I did that by myself. They are not as heavy as I thought they were gonna be and it, luckily just slid right over my little anchor pieces and it was no big deal. Here is where I started to struggle. This beam did not go in quite so easily. 
I seriously was trying to get this beam up for almost an hour. It was super frustrating. Nothing I was doing was working and I couldn't figure it out, but I wanted to just keep this in because I wanted you guys to see this is how it goes sometimes. I should have known things were going too easily. Here's what I think is happening. These end pieces are kind of like coming in at the top. So I'm just adding a one by eight spacer to make sure that they are as wide as they're supposed to be so they will slide over our support up there the way they're supposed to. So after I added that spacer, that really did help. I was able to get the beam up, but I seriously had to pound on that beam with the mallet so much just to get it to go into place. I don't know what the difference was. And then I am just adding some spackling to cover those edges that I would cut the drywall away and that is going to hide all of those little gaps. Okay, while we wait on that spackling to dry so we can sand everything, I need to work on this. This is the attic access and these boards, these trim boards, are what holds up this piece of drywall, which is just starting to crumble because if you go in and out of the attic, I mean, it's just not a good setup. So we're gonna take this off, replace it with some wood, and then replace this piece right here. This not only looks so much better than it did before, it's also going to hold up so much better because it's not a piece of drywall that's gonna be crumbling the first time you go into the attic. And these wood pieces are glued together so the joints will stay strong. So yeah, all around, definitely an upgrade. Now the spackling was all dry, so it was time to sand that. And I did add a little bit of texture to it, which I didn't include because I've showed that a lot on my channel. And then just did some touch up paint to really make everything look nice and seamless. And the beams had a couple of spots where I had used screws and not nails. And so I just took some stain to cover those little spots. I wood filled them first and then went over it with stain. And then I'm just using a rag to blot out that stain and make it blend with the rest of the board. We are on the home stretch of this project and I know that it's tempting to not worry about these small little details here at the end, but this is really what takes a project from DIY to looking professional. These finishing touches that are really gonna make you much happier with the project in the long run. Okay, the beams are all done. I just need to add a few more finishing touches on this hallway and this project is complete. Everything is done, but before I show you guys the final re reveal of the hallway, 
Let's take a look at what the hallway used to look like so we can fully appreciate how far it's come. That's it for today's video and that's it for this hallway makeover. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for all of these videos if you have seen all of them and make sure that if you want to try out June's journey to click the link down in the description to download the game and I will see you guys soon with another project. Bye!